We're going to work on a 2007 Graco 5900 auto layout. Uh, we're going to service the front wheel today. The front wheel has been serviced since it was new. A little grease here and there, but today we're going to pull it apart, pull apart the front wheel, remove the stem, repack the bearings, and take a look at to see what the races look like. First thing to do is we're going to remove the entire assembly off the front of the machine. Just makes it easier to put it in the vise and get the bottom seals out. So you got to remove the, the front wheel cable, release cable. Once that's off, 9 16 pulls off the two nuts. A bracket I made that slides into the front gun holder, keeps the front of the machine up, and then the whole assembly comes off the machine. Now we have the front wheel and a vise. I'll pull off the top dust cap. We're going to take off the axle and the nut for the actual front wheel. End of the axle there's these little cup washers make sure you don't drop them axle out cup washer front wheel comes out see each side of the front wheel there's little spacers skinny side of the spacer goes into the wheel fat side stays out as you can tell from the build up on these they've been in there for a while so we're going to set the front wheel to the side for now. We're going to pull out the main axle. Nut. This has a double washer. They go fat side out. They're concave. So they sandwich together on the main axle. Pull the main axle, pull the bearing out. <laughs> Not a lot of grease on it. Actually more grease on it than I thought it would for, for the 13 year old bearing. Um, so on the bottom of it, there's an oil, oil seal that holds the bottom bearing in. We have to get that out. What we'll do is we'll put it back in the vise, clamp it down. Use a large socket. This is a, a one inch socket. Put that on top of the bearings. Dead blow hammer, gently tap that, the bottom bearing out comes out, oil seal comes out, no damage to it. We can reuse that, put that back in again. And the front bearing, which actually has a good amount of grease on it, original grease on it. Uh, inside the front wheel, there's races that the bearings ride into, which are Replaceable, which are right in here, here, and down here. These races show no sign of damage, so we do not have to replace them. If you did have to replace the bearings, 
you punch, you put a screwdriver in, catch the edge, you punch them out, and then gently uh, push the new ones in with a hammer and something big enough that you're not going to damage the races with. So that we can put to, put to the side for now. We're going to prep the main swivel wheel bearings to get cleaned. Wipe them down the best you can. As much grease as you can off of them. And they have a little bucket of gasoline. Let them soak in the gasoline for a little while. Break up the, the old grease. These big nasty spacers, same thing. Clean off the best you can. I don't know how, how they get so much hair on them, but they do. Get them nice and clean. Throw them in the water, in the uh, gasoline. clean so we'll put them to the side in the bucket get everybody in there uh, these little washers what I do is I take a uh, out here old hole saw bit I put them in the hole saw put them all in there and put them in the put them in the gasoline and just so you don't have to root around in the bottom of the pail looking for that do not put the oil seal into the gasoline. The gasoline can affect the quality of the rubber and it will damage the oil seal. Not that they're expensive, a couple dollars a piece, but if you don't have to, you don't have to. Clean it out so it's nice and clean. That's done. The nuts, pretty clean. This nut's not so clean. We'll put this, we'll drop this nut into the hole saw. Let that soak. So while that's soaking, we'll take apart the front wheel. Two spacers, one inch tubing I use. And on the front wheel, it has two of those oil seals on it. One on one side. And one on the other side. So on the first side, you have to gently nudge out by hitting the bearing. You don't want to hit hit it hard, nice and gentle, but you don't want to damage your bearing. Just put it in. Harder than usual. So okay. there it goes. You see, there's must have had water in it. It's all wet and nasty inside it. Here's the bearing. Yeah, it's. You see how the the grease is deteriorated. There's water or something inside this this wheel somewhere along the line. So I'll just wipe it down again. The wheel bearings and the spindle bearings are the same bearings. So you don't have to worry about mixing them up when you put them in the put them into soak. Yeah, it's gonna have to wait a minute. We gotta push that one out. Same water socket, gentle taps, and the bottom bearing out. Along with a lot of nasty grease. So, it just doesn't, you can tell from the way the upper bearings looked compared to the way these greasy ones look. Something's, 
something got into this front wheel somewhere along the line. I don't know. We don't paint in the rain, so I don't know where the hell the water comes from. Maybe driving through a lot of puddles. But clean that one off the best we can. Soak in the gas. We're going to take our old dirty paper towel and try to push as much of this nasty, disgusting grease out as we can. Try to get this thing as clean as possible. This way we can take a look at the bearings, at the races, once it's all greased. Yep, there's definitely water. It's all rusty inside it. Take some more paper towels. All right. As you can tell from the tire, the tire probably should be replaced, but this is a backup machine. It's not a primary machine, so it doesn't see that much usage anymore. The machine has about 12,000 gallons through it since 2007. They got taken off primary machine after about three years and gone to secondary. Actually, this race is shot. See if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but right here there's a dull spot. Actually, you can. Dull spot there. See on the race, it's all different colors. There's a little blackness there. So that race is shot. So that means the front wheel is going to get new races and bearings. This, though, yeah, the other side's just as bad. Actually, really bad. So at this point, if it was a primary machine, I'd just throw the wheel out and buy a new Graco wheel. But at this point, it's cheaper to spend the $10 on bearings and races, somewhere around $10, um, and fix this. And then the oil seal from the tire. Now, if we're going to go through the trouble of putting uh, races and bearings in it, more than likely I'm just going to replace the oil seals on this. Yeah, because these are so... These are, these are pretty bad. So, we'll get two, two seals, two bearings, and two races on this front wheel. So, let's see what the bearings look like. Get rid of that thing. So what we have the choice now is we have the choice of picking out of the four bearings the best bearings out of them. You can see it on this. See how this is the dark color on the bearings? That's what happens when you don't service the machine for 13 years. Let's see what else we got in here. That was a front wheel bearing because that's really bad. Can't even get this. Has to soak for another 20 minutes to get that grease out of there. Let me look at this one. Doesn't look too bad. I'll use this as one of the upper bearings. So we'll keep that one to the side. Into a nasty bucket. See what else we can pull out here. And here's another one.
Yep, this barn doesn't look bad either. There's no dark spots. A little grease left on it, but nothing bad. So those two are keepers. That one's burnt. That's garbage. Up in a bucket. And oh, actually, Baron gets replaced. This is the bottom one I punched out, so those two are bad. Let's see what our our spacers look like. Actually clean up pretty good. I'll take it on the wire wheel and mop the little bit of paint off that's on it. Actually cleaned up pretty nice. Now that's four bearings. I pulled the fifth one out of the bucket. This one was hiding in there from a different machine. Actually, this one doesn't look bad either. Yeah. So we'll keep that as a keeper. In case we bend some. Oh, look, there's another one. Amazing what happens in a dirty pile of gasoline. Let's see what this one. Well, this one is definitely shot. You look at the bottom, where is it? Right here, right from my finger. Oh, this is focus. The bearing is chewed up. It's got some damage. Two or three of them right there is damage. So, clean or not, that one's garbage. So, amazing. Six bearings. All right, there's a nut we're soaking. Just like everything looking nice and neat when we put it back together. Pull out our our washers. Find some place not greasy in the workbench. So we're just gonna pull out all the washers. Clean them off. got to do some cleaning on the wheel itself. Probably use some brake clean or carb clean in there. Get all that nasty uh, grease that's in there. Get all that crap out. You can tell there's water in the uh, in the wheel somehow. They're all rusty around the edges. Versus the top one, which is absolutely spotless. So, somehow there was water. Don't know how. But we'll make do with what we have. And that will be it. So go out and get some parts to this thing and we'll see what happens. All right, all the bearings are ordered and races are ordered. They should be here hopefully tomorrow. Uh, so I figured we might as well fight a little bit. Try to get the races out of this front wheel. I moved off the workbench because this is going to get bumpy and very loud. Grab a properly sized hammer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this pin. And the pin's going to sit on the bottom. There's a lip in here. That's the outer edge. Or actually the inner edge of the race. So we're going to hold the pin on there. Hit it. Move to the opposite side. Work it back and forth. And as you can see, it has come out. I took my spacers out, aka old gun bar, and we'll just finish tapping it out. There it is.
So now you can really see it. There it is. There it is. All the discoloration in the race itself. So it was garbage. The whole race, race kit, race bearing and oil seals. It's like $25. Weren't available locally, so I had to Amazon it. Call my local trailer guy, and they don't have there's only three quarter inch shafts, so they don't carry anything that small. So let's punch out the other side. Easier to start it on the flat. You hear the noise, throw it up on the block. Make sure the rim is under the block, not just the rubber. Or else you'll just bounce. And voila, it's out. Getting them out is a lot easier than putting them in. That's going to be... Actually, they make special tools to seat these things. And I picked one up on Amazon. Make it easier to get these things back in rather than beating it with a hammer and a piece of pipe like I've done in the past so that's how you, that's how fast you get the the races out now you really can get in there and get all that nasty greasy water soaked crap out of there not bad it's probably a little bright clean in there but that's for the next time once I get the parts we'll come back and we'll start reassembling this all right, well, we've got this taken apart. We're gonna check a couple things on this. We're gonna take off this arm, which locks your front wheel. We're gonna check this block. These bolts sometimes loosen up on you and it'll give you an unsteady front wheel. So I'll pop this thing off real quick. That does not wanna come off. Uh... <laughs> Let's try something bigger and better. A lot of times when they've been on there for so many years, water gets in, especially this one, water gets in it. There it goes. Just need a little help. And it'll rust the threads out and doesn't like to release on you. Look at that. Sway that out a little faster. All right, threads look, still look good. So take it apart. What you want to do is you want to look at get some spray on that. So on this piece, this is what actually locks your front wheel in. So after, obviously, this has been changed before this will get worn out and it'll get ridges on it the diameter of it will get smaller from the wear actually you can feel it here there's a little little lip on it that's how much it's it's uh got worn out and on the bottom too right here you see there's a lip this side actually that side looks like it's been used so i i don't know this side's good, so they're double-sided, so what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart, flip it around, so this end will now be on this side to engage the front wheel. It's the same size. These bolts loosen up. <laughs> As I say, it loosens up. doesn't want to come out. Uh... A lot of times your front wheel starts getting bouncy and loose. Check those bolts. A lot of times they'll loosen up on you. And that will be the main cause of your uh, front wheel being messed up. This machine definitely had a water issue. There it goes. Just 
did not want to come out. All right. Now the impact should get it. One comes out. All right. Both are out now. So you literally just pick it up, turn it, and bolt it right back down again. That's how you change out. If both sides were worn out, if I did this once before, you'd actually have to buy a new one from Graco. It's the only way you can get the front wheel to lock in nice and tight. And uh, so you don't get any rocking. Nice and tight there. I'm just going to take it on a ratchet. Get a little extra security that... Yeah, see. Not too tight. It's only aluminum you're screwing into. So just snug nice. And that's it. You can put Loctite on them. I've never found a need to do Loctite. Um, they cinch in pretty good. But after a couple years, they will vibrate out. So now we're good. The bad side is on this side. This is what locks into the wheel. And uh, that's it for that part. Now... One piece that they put on this that I have never ever used is this lock. There's supposed to be a knob on this side that locks this bracket in. I've had more problems with these vibrating themselves, spinning in, locking the wheel, and you can't figure out why the front wheel is dragging. So what I do actually on my new ones, as soon as I get the brand new machine, I will take it apart and pop pop this right off without before it even hits the, the ground for painting. I'll remove this whole assembly, knob and block, before it even goes on the hill, out on the, uh, the pavement. I just think it's, I've never used it. It's very unusual where you can, it takes more time to set this thing up to use it than it is just to swing, swing the gun around to the rear and just send it. So there it is, it's off. There's a little piece of thread in here that's left. That doesn't matter. That's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to interfere with the operation of the front wheel. And while we're here, we'll just take some carb cleaner. Clean the front wheel. Make sure there's no damage. And that is about it for this part of it. Once we get the new bearings in, we will continue this and rebuild this front wheel so we got our wheel bearings finally in uh we got new races new wheel bearings timken ones better than the chinese knockoffs that come with the machines or you can buy for five dollars a set first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the races into the wheel make sure the cone is facing out gently set it into the beginning I bought a race setter. It is set for like 40 bucks from Harbor Freight or a local auto parts store. Makes it 10 times easier putting the races in. They sit right on top and just bang them in. With the right size hammer. Flip it over to see if you're down all the way. And go a little bit farther. That's it. One set. We'll take our other brand new one. Make sure it's straight when you go in. And then we're set. Races are installed. So now we have to grease the wheel bearings. For that, we use a grease packer. 
you fill up with red red uh, multi-purpose grease throw the bearing in and give it a push when you're done grease is all out of the top of the bearings you take a little bit of grease that squirted out Put a little bit of grease on the bearings, on the uh, races, I'm sorry. Drop the bearing in, make sure it's seated right. Then we take the front wheels, I re usually reuse the old oil seals. There's really nothing wrong with these. That one's really dirty. This one's not bad. Clean some of the big gunk out of it also what I've been doing is taking a little bit of extra red grease and just packing the edges of the bearings just to make sure that we're not going to blow out another set of bearings on this machine So once it's all packed in there nice and tight, we're good to go. Now we're going to drop the oil seal in. Then tap it in with a dead blow. Done. Now I'll do is flip it over. Pack the next brand new bearing. I'm sure in the middle of summer this is easier because we should be a little bit thinner. There you go. Grease it out of the top. Take a little extra grease. Put on the races. Drop the bearing. Seat it straight. Add a little extra grease to it. another oil seal give it a gentle tap in front wheels done bearings and races are done give it a quick wipe to remove any excess grease that's squirted out we're gonna put in our wheel spacers I cleaned them up on the grinder on the wire wheel the other day Put both of them back in. While we've got the front wheel sitting here, we're gonna check air pressure. Usually about 30 PSI. And this one had 20. Yeah, there we go. All right, front wheel is done. We can put this to the side and wait till we assemble the front. So now we're gonna work on these bearings. One bearing I had for the bottom was good, so we're going to reuse that old bearing. The top bearing, I don't know if you can see it, is all brown and discolored around the bottom. So that means that bearing got hot somehow. So that one's garbage. So we're going to change the race and bearing in the top. So the same procedure as knocking them out, flip it over. Grab my rod. Hey, rod. There it is. And gently tap that one out. Oh, that's loud. I'll take it off the metal and see if it's a little bit better on the side. Actually, that one came right out. Oh, that's good or bad, but it came right out.
there, just race out. Make sure the inside's clean. Open up our new bearing and race. Tapered side out. Push it in. Well, actually, that one pushes in pretty easy. So on a flat. Uh -oh. I don't know if that went in too easy or not. I'm not sure about that one. So on this one, there's an oil seal on the bottom. So we have to do the bottom first. The top one just gets a, a cap on it. So we're going to. I got a new oil seal for the bottom. So we're going to pack the bottom bearing was the used one. So we're going to reuse that with the same bearings. So throw it on the greaser. Press until it comes out. Bearings greased. A little grease on the race. Drop the bearing in. Seat it. So it's nice and flat. Pack some more grease around her. And tap in the new oil seal. All this is just packing the top of the bearings. Take the oil seal. Done. Wipe off the excess. Before you do the top bearing, take the time, take off this this set screw this uh shoulder bolt and take a look at it and inspect it i did a machine yesterday or i kept the bolt the uh the handle was very this moves very easy i took it off it was a little rough to move it it turns out the shoulder bolt rusted uh, here it is this is from a, a three-year-old line laser see how rusty it is that was grabbing on it and it wasn't moving smooth like this one did. So I just took this, got rid of that one, put a new one on. A little white lithium grease when you put it back in and she's nice and slick now. So we can do top bearings easy. Got fill up with grease. Greased, same routine. Grease on the race. Drop the bearing in. Do the bearing is straight. A little bit more grease on top. Now this one doesn't get an oil seal on top. It gets the cap. Like a trailer, uh, here it is. This gets the cap on the top so you can adjust the tension of the bolt for your swivel. That's done. Then we're gonna take our parts. <clears throat> we're gonna take two of the beveled washers. One facing down, one facing up. where it sits so now we're going to take this
put in the vise, reassemble. So this goes in the vise like this. I turn the vise slightly off, off center. The main axle going up. Can't hurt to put a little, little grease on this. Have a nut ready. All right, we're into a little mistake there. When you slide it up, make sure your your uh, wheel lock is out of the way. Axle comes up. Put your new wheel bearing on. Push the caps on. The double washers. Then thread your nylock nut stop nut on top. Now you can let go of it and the assembly won't hit the floor. Now you have that ready to go. It is inch and a sixteenth socket. We'll tighten this one up. The way I do this is I tighten them down till it's snug. And it's so hard to move the, the wheel, but there's no rocking in it. So it doesn't spin smoothly. So just take it now since it's tight, give it a little quarter turn back off. It's, it's moving, but it's not spinning. So another eighth or quarter inch, quarter turn. Still not going. Getting there. That's good. That's that's spinning nice now. Other thing you want to do is you want to take the forks and rock it. Make sure it's tight in your vise. Take the wheel and rock the forks. You don't want the forks to move. That means this is too loose and your front wheel is going to go out of alignment. I'm just gonna try a hair. Oh, that that's that's nice and loose. Try. Yep, no no movement. So that is done. We can take the dust cap that we just had. Gently persuade the dust cap. Back into place. So now this front shaft is done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take it, turn it over. So now we have the wheel. Start working on the wheel assembly. Need the axle. Give the axle a wipe down. Then we need two washers, two beveled washers. One goes on the axle first, the bevel side out. Put the wheel on. Slide it through. Other one cup side out so it's nice and straight now we're going to take the other nut put the other nut on so use the same inch and sixteenth on the nut the bolt is about an inch and a quarter I don't have a bolt uh, socket for the bolt side, so use a pair of ice grips. Don't use impact guns to do this because you you'll really crunch the uh, the bearings. A little bit of cranking is not going to hurt you, and you can really set the front wheel so it spins. So once again, 
tighten her down, set the bearings and, and everything in place. The front wheel barely spins now, so I'm gonna start backing it off. You want it to spin very freely, but not be wobbling. Check for wobble. No wobble yet, so we can back it off a little bit more. Okay, it's been even. There you go. They actually can hear the bearings working the grease on inside. Now take the wheel. This one is a little bit too loose. There's a little rock in the in the bearings, so I have to tighten up a hair more. That one became too loose. Just a, a sixteenth of a turn. Then the wheel stops spinning as fast, but it still spins free. Take the wheel, and there's no rock. So that's done. It is ready to go back on the machine. We'll move you over there next. We'll do that. All right, here we are. We're going to put our rebuilt front wheel back on the machine, reconnect the cable, and get ready to start painting. So we'll just take off our hardware that we put on so we didn't lose it. Take our freshly painted bracket. Had a couple down days, so put a fresh coat of paint on it, make it look nice. You know, the rest of that frame looks pretty crappy. Usually sits up there, so you don't have to hold it while you're threatening them. Throw the nuts on. Other thing you have to make sure is when you put the front wheel on is the arm lock is in front of the the uh, cable coming out or else you will not be able to get it so we're good there good here So they're on, so that will not fall off now. And through the mess, I have misplaced the spring. So let me find the spring. We'll put the spring on and get that reset. Got a spring for it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this cable off the front handlebars, off the trigger, straighten out the best we can. And we're gonna pull this cable back through the, through the sheath so we can get this thing, this spring back on easier than normal. Let's see if this will work. There it goes. So I take the cable, pull it back into the sheath a little bit. All right, at this point, we got the cable pulled back about less than a half an inch sticking out. So now we can put the spring in. You'll put it on the back first with the wire, crunch it in, compress it as much as you can, and get snapped on the front. Now you have to get the wire through the hole in the front, which is sometimes a little bit of a challenge because this is an older cable. So it doesn't like to run real smooth. Quite honestly, we're gonna replace the cable. The cable's starting to fray. I'll pull the cable out. Look at the end of the wire. See a big kink in it? It's an older cable. And the wire frayed in the front. So we're gonna go pull a new one out. I'll show you what, what I use for front wheel cables. These are the cables we use. These are tandem bike rear brake brake cables. They're really long. I think they cost about $6 a piece versus 
the Graco where you have to buy the whole tube and everything. You, they just don't sell you the replacement cable. So we just these are uh, stainless steel braided cables. Been using them for several years now and really haven't had any issues with them failing on us early. But even if they did fail us on early, the Great Coast cable is about $35 a piece and this cable is about five or six dollars. So I'm gonna have to replace this cable every year. It's still gonna be cheaper. Got two ends on this. This is the end you want. This end we cut off with a real sharp pair of diagonal cutters. Quick and easy. Sheets off. Twist the cables so they're not frayed. And then we'll slide it back through this, the existing cable sheath. Usually don't replace the cable sheets only when they get hooked on something and torn and bent. And you can tell when you slide the cable in if it's going to go in nice and easy or not. This one is going real easy. All right. It's hard to see, but the cable's through the spring. I'm going to use a little pick, a little overing pick, to guide the cable through the main hole in the, in the front reel. Wheel release. There it goes. Now we'll pull this tight. See so the length of it. I'll move you up front. I'll show you how I dis disabled the, the gun trigger itself. So I literally just took the cable out of the grip. Just makes life a lot easier because I can take this piece, bend this over to the front of the machine so I can re-thread it with one hand using the other hand to guide the pieces in. These two guys have a slits in them. They're cut. So line them up, line them up on the bottom, put the bell in the grip, then work the cable through the two slits. Slide the sheath in. That's it. That's all set, ready to go. We'll move back around front and we will do the final connections on the front wheel. All right, we got our cable clamp. Not the official Great Deal version, just a lot cheaper version of it. 95 cents online. Make sure the cables are all nice and straight. There's no whiskers hanging off of them. Put it in, thread it down. I always pull the release lever as I'm tightening down the cable. This sometimes, once you start using it a little bit, so to the new cable, you will have to uh, readjust this front wheel cable. So you want to just tighten it, snug it, not too tight. Go too tight, you can cut the cable and your cable's garbage. Next thing we're gonna do is slide a, a ferrule on it to keep this from fraying out. All right, we have our wire ferrule. We're gonna slip on the end of the cable. We got the crimpers to go on them. So we'll do is thread it on the opposite, the metal part first, let the blue side stick out, send, send it in. You want, to, you want to give yourself a little bit of slack. You don't want to go real tight. So I usually leave it so it touches the top of the frame. Crimp it down. Now we'll cut off the excess wire. It's done. This keeps the cable from fraying. It will un unravel. And unravel itself all the way up through the cable. Once it does that, you have to replace the cable because the cable gets sticky. Front wheel won't release, won't pull. Check the wheel. Everything's nice and sturdy. And that is it. The front wheel is done, reinstalled. 
a refraction.